Uh, very good morning, dear friends. Myself, Dr. Vikrant Sudhakar Palaikar. I am working as an assistant professor in Gokhale Education Society, Arts, Commerce and Science College, Chawar, Palgar. Welcome in the series of Synthesis of Organic Compound. This is the second session we are doing. In the first session, we have tried to understand the basic concepts related with the critical ideal synthesis. Then, what is the concept of yield? Then, how to calculate practical yield, theoretical yield and percentage yield. And we also try to see what are the different types of selectivity are there. So in this particular session we are going to see what are the different types of organic synthesis and what is multi-component synthesis. So basically we will start with the types of organic synthesis. Already we know that there are different types of uh, synthesis. By basically, we, come, we know that uh, the synthesis may be carried out in a, a single step process, double step process or multi step process. So based upon these steps, this synthesis is differentiated into two types. First one is called as a linear synthesis. So what is linear synthesis? It is a synthesis in which product is obtained through a series of single step reactions. So single step reactions are carried out and every step is converted into next product. So how it can be carried out? Let us say for example A reacts with B, then B form again will react with the some reagent and it is being converted into C and vice versa it is reacted with the another reagent, it will get converted into D and it will get finally converted into product, desired product. So it is called a linear synthesis. So in which every product form is get converted into another uh, product by addition of subsequent reagent. So let us take the example. As we know that if you want to synthesize a para bromoaniline, so this is a compound. So this particular uh, compound cannot be prepared in the single step process. So how to, it can be prepared? It is the first taken aniline and it is reacted with the acetic anhydride. So what will happen acetic anhydride carried out acetylation. As we know that aniline is the compound which is being para directing. So what will happen whatever the uh, reaction will take place it will take place at 4 position uh, sorry uh, it is a N acylation process. So basically uh, when uh, aniline and acetic anhydride reacts it will form acetanilide. So this is a N acylation process takes place. So whatever acetanilide form, it is then brominated and the bromination will take place at 4 position. So it is a being para directing. So whatever the electrophile bromine will go to the 4 position. So what is the product form? 4 bromo acetanilide or para bromo acetanilide. So this para bromo acetanilide once formed, then it is being hydrolyzed with the help of water. So what will happen? this NC bond undergo breakdown and what will happen this COCS3 will get converted into acetic acid and you will get the formation of para bromo aniline. So this is how the para bromo aniline is being obtained in the three step A gives B, B gives C and C gives final product. So this particular type of synthesis is called as a linear synthesis. So whatever the product form in each step is being converted into further products till we want to get the desired products. Such a, such a type of synthesis is being called as a linear synthesis. If you see this particular linear synthesis, in the linear synthesis whatever the yield obtained is get decreased. So oh, yield obtained will be less as compared to the single step process because whatever the byproducts that they are formed they are going to decrease your final yield. So this is a multi-step reaction in which product yield will be always lesser than as compared to the single step reaction. So as the number of steps increases, the yield of the reaction will decrease. So we can uh, expect that the in linear synthesis, whatever the yield we are going to get, it will be lesser. Okay. Then next type will be Convergent synthesis, second type of organic synthesis is called as a convergent synthesis. So what is convergent synthesis? It is being 
synthesis in which final product is obtained as a result of reaction between compounds obtained separately through different routes. So here we have to consider two routes. From first route we will get some desired product. From second route we will get some desired product. Then in the third step, the what are the desired product obtained in the first step reacted with the second step desired product and you will get the final product. How can it be possible? Let us see. Suppose for example, A plus B plus C reacts and they will give product P in the step 1. Then in another linear synthesis, C plus D reacts, it will give the product Q that is in the step 2. So what we need to take in the step 3, we have to react P that is obtained in the step 1 and Q which is obtained in the step 2 to get the desired product. So this is a three step process. So basically it is a reaction between the products obtained through two different routes. So P is obtained by first route while Q is obtained by second route and in the step 3 these two products are condensed or reacted to get the final product. This we have to consider. So what we need to remember the total number of steps in conversion synthesis are less as compared to the linear synthesis and this factor contribute to higher yield in conversion synthesis as compared to the linear synthesis. So we have to remember that in conversion synthesis whatever the yield we are going to get it will be higher as compared to the linear synthesis. So this is a plus point of the conversion synthesis ok. You must have understood what is being a conversion synthesis. Remember. Uh, in whatever the product obtained it is through two different routes. Now we are going to see the what is convergent synthesis. In this we particular are going to see the uh, synthesis of drug called as Benadryl. It is a uh, drug which is uh, being used at an uh, anti epimistic So uh, basically uh, it is carried out in the two step. So first step ethylene oxide is reacted with the dimethyl amine. So what will happen this nitrogen will attack on the any of the carbon and this particular bond undergo breakdown. So this bond will break CO bond will break and as a result of that the cyclic compound get opened and what compound you will get OH, CH2, CH2, N, CH3 twice. So this is the compound 1 obtained in the step 1. So in the step 2 we have taken this particular compound where CH2 is flanked in between the two phenyl rings. So definitely these two protons will be acidic. So what will happen the bromination in presence of photochemical reaction, the bromination will take place at this particular carbon. So this is a compound to obtain. So this compound obtain, compound A in the step 1, compound B in the second step and step number 3, what will there? There is a condensation, whatever the product obtained in the second step, this is the product obtained in the first step. So what will happen, these two products will condense together and they will form a desired product. So how they will condense, here is the Br and here is the H. So what will happen, let us see, HBr will be eliminated, H from this particular compound which is obtained from step 1 and this is a Br from the compound which is obtained from step 2. This is a simple elimination of HBr to give the final product. So there is a new bond form which is you can observe this red color bond. The bond between C and O is the newly formed bond and this particular compound is called as a Benadryl. So it is being used as a drug. So basically this is a convergent synthesis in which we have taken we have got the compound from two steps and in the final step we have condensed together to form the desired products. So these are the two types of the synthesis what we have seen. One is the linear synthesis and uh, second one is the convergent synthesis. Convergent synthesis is beneficial in terms of the yield whatever we are going to get in the final compound. Then we are going to see the next concept that is multi-component synthesis. The name itself suggests multi means many steps, multi components where we get multi two or more components reacted and they give desired products. So what is multi component synthesis? 
it involves more than two components two or three components react together in a single pot or in a single vessel and they form a single product that particular synthesis is called as a multi component synthesis so this synthesis are more efficient than single or multi step synthesis in terms of yield and economy multi component reactions are more efficient than single step or multi step that is linear synthesis in terms of yield and economy because yield is obtained through this reactions is also very good and economical point of view that in a single vessel we are going to get that particular desired product so these are uh, very uh, beneficial as compared to the uh, other methods so let us see some of the points related with the multi component there are n number of multi component reaction but here we are going to see majorly two reactions one is called as a manich reaction and another is called as a beginnerly reaction so in this particular session we will see manich reaction so what is manich reaction there are three components reacts okay what are the three components means there are three reactant a plus b plus c they will give the product okay so it is a condensation of compound containing active methylene compound we know what are the active methylene compounds where methylene group is flanking between the two electron withdrawing groups so as a result of that this methylene uh, groups uh, becomes more reactive or we can say these methylene protons are more acidic in so they can be easily abstracted so it is a condensation between active methylene compound formaldehyde and ammonia or primary amine or secondary amine they give beta amino compound that particular reaction is called as a manich reaction once you under, once you see the structure you will understand basic uh, things so remember this is a three component reaction in which active methylene compound formaldehyde and primary or secondary amines will react they will form beta amino compounds so this particular reaction is carried out in acidic medium you need some acidic medium in order to react these two compon uh, compounds uh, together so whatever the final product obtained in manich reaction that is beta amino carbonyl compound so this particular beta amino carbonyl compound is called as a manich base what is the reaction manich reaction so whatever the product obtained is called as a manich base let us see what is a uh, basic synthesis is that so as we know that this is a acetophenone so this ch2 group is quite acidic one then this is a formaldehyde and there is a methyl amine and as we know that methyl amine is the primary amine so this is a condensation of a b and c in presence of acidic medium so what will happen only water molecule will be eliminated okay so this is a three components reacts but first of all if you see the mechanism first there is only two components reacts one is the formaldehyde and methyl amine and as we know that methyl amine is quite a nucleophilic in the nature it will attack on the electron deficient carbonyl carbon and that will form the iminium base and whatever the iminium base form then will react with the acetophenone so this is a basically a condensation reaction in which you will get this particular manich base so this particular compound is called as a beta amino compound so this is a carbonyl compound this is alpha carbon this is a beta carbon and beta carbon is attached to the amino group n methyl so this particular uh, what are the uh, compound obtained is called as a manich base so uh, beta amino carbonyl compound is obtained so here you can see this particular red color it is coming from acetophenone hydrogen is less here then this ch2 group which is from the formaldehyde and n and ch3 so what is being eliminated only water so if you see the water is the only by product form in the reaction so in terms of yield if you see the yield obtained for this reaction is very good because only 18 uh, molar mass is being eliminated so yield will be good and what other thing is that these three components will react in a single vessel so unit operation will get decreased like filtration heating and all those operations will get decreased so e economically also this reaction is very favorable as compared to the linear synthesis okay because in a one pot only we are getting 
the final desired products this manage base is very important uh, in terms of other products uh, which we need to form so remember what is uh, manage reaction so once we understand that manage reaction is nothing but what it is a type of multi component reaction basically it is a convergent synthesis remember go through this particular types of synthesis and manage reaction it is manage reaction is very important uh, as a exam point of view definitely draw the structure you will understand the things see you in the next session thank you very much